Is this so people like thinking that this Activision Microsoft deal is um bad for gaming and everything like that? And yeah, it, it's you know more consolidation that's mm. happening. I mean, I guess but, there's but, a select group, but if you talk to any Activision Blizzard fans, overwhelmingly, like overwhelmingly, seventy five plus percent of any poll is positive. Like, I'm thank pretty, God for Microsoft. I'm pretty excited because I yeah. I really want to play Diablo two Resurrected, but. I haven't felt comfortable doing that. Oh, yeah. Now that, uh, you know, now that Kodak is giving the old hee-ho, you can uh, go ahead and just say, okay, well, all that toxic management could be out of there, and we could go ahead and go back to being Blizzard fans. It's just, like I said, people. there were people that say this is bad for gaming, but then I'm just thinking, well, Activision Blizzard was just sitting on these titles. They were basically, like, you know, a lesser version of Konami. And it was just like not doing anything with their IPs except just putting out the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. And now Microsoft's gonna be like, "Oh, we got all these. Let's uh, go ahead and just give ourselves variety here. Sprinkle a little bit of a uh, Salt Bay, a little bit of a uh, little bit of Hex in here, a little bit of Crash Bandicoot here, a little bit of a uh, Nightmare Creatures there, a little bit of Diablo here, a little bit of um, so, ooh, hmm, yeah. Microsoft. We're PC. You know what's funny and popular on PC? Real-time strategy games. We have this little thing now called StarCraft." Yeah, that they haven't touched for 10 years. Mm hmm And when did they touch it even before that? I mean, you had, like, what, start the canceled StarCraft Ghost? Well, StarCraft original was 97. Yeah. Oh. And StarCraft 2 Wings of Liberty came out in 2011. Yeah. So, long time. It was popular. It was popular. I don't get why they didn't just touch it, touch it again because they didn't do Call of Duty sales. Real time strategy games are never going to do that. Yeah, but that's exactly why. Because it's Activision. Because yeah. the Activision was like, all right, if I had to pick between doing another StarCraft and selling 5 million or doing uh, Overwatch or something that could potentially be 10 million, well, I'm going to pick the Overwatch instead of being like, let's just make good games that sell well and they're always going to make money. Uh, they say so they, they kind of pioneered the idea of monetization through time consumption. All right. So they wanted your attention. They wanted you there. They wanted to send their content release to little trickles and then gate it into time. So you had to spend all your time to keep playing that game because they knew people had it, had that kind of like addictive drive it was you know it, it was a abuse of power almost uh, it, it was very just the way they monetized in the way they created content and released it was extremely toxic and, and that was what was really not good for gaming like no. I, look at Shadowlands released for WoW. Terrible. Okay, so I paid sixty dollars for a game, and the initial upfront game we all understand is the base story, and then you'll get more story with next expansion, like next patch, and you'll do story patches. You'll get content releases, like every other memo that's existed. That's how it works. That's they the beginning only put of time. so much in, release it, then they'll fix it, get more story, release it. Well, they were like, well, we'd rather have you play a long time. So we're going to put a whole bunch of systems in here that you have to keep on working on. And then, well, we don't want you to do the story all at once because you might leave. Even though you paid for the whole story. Yeah. You already paid $60 for the new expansion. Then they, they not to interrupt. And you get time part of it. They time gated. So you have to keep coming back for the next, I don't know, six months. Yeah, to get past just that initial storyline, um, with even if you were playing and to do it in the shortest amount of time possible, with the way they time gated, time gated, time gated it all, it was like fourteen weeks or something, just yeah. to get to the end of chapter one, which means that your thirty day 
game time with your expansion pass is already expired. You done bought two more months of uh, sub. Yep. Okay. Well, your $60 game is not a $60 game anymore. Just to get the content I was supposedly promised from the first game, like first purchase, it's actually $84. But, yeah, they, and I, but they know that. That's a corporate else. move and it pisses a lot of people off. But so, but they know people, there's such a big audience that's part. So, so what I was not really growing anymore, um, what really has is just diehards. And they know that that big, large, core group of people, and a lot of them just play WoW. They don't play other games. They'll just deal with it. They're they've, not been playing, playing. they've been playing WoW for almost 20 years. Yeah, yeah they, for almost 20 years they were playing EverQuest before that. They have vested interest. Like, they can't stop because they think that their time, all the time they spent the last 20 years doing it, will have been for nothing. So it's this conundrum to them. Like, they, they oh, I gotta just keep playing it. I can't stop playing it. Otherwise, what I've been doing for 20 years. So they just put up with it. So you still got millions of people subbing for it now. Well, maybe not, not millions anymore a very large portion so how do they get more money out of a population that's not growing well you make them pay for subs longer and then you just you, you just find different ways to incentivize them to pay for extra things on the cash shop oh and the third way of course is the wow token 100 they make buku buck off the wow token Wild wow, wow, Token like is a real money auction house. Yeah, so like a marriage, as Wing King Tizar said. It's just um, people just feel like they're tied to it, and they just can't let it go, and they can't get going. And I just glad I never really got into a game so much where I feel like my entire life was devoted to it, so I just had to keep going with it and just keep going with it and not just move on from one game to the next. That's what I always like you know, just dug about just going from the non-subscription service and just going, I'm like, oh, I'm done with this game. It's, it's, it's over, period. Meanwhile, the, the antithesis of what you're talking about, I'm seeing people beating Endwalker in like two weeks, and I'm just like, okay. <laughs> that, that, I guess people really enjoy the shit out of that expansion. It's already over with them. So now it's just at this point, just getting updated to, so they can keep playing. But they keep playing just because it's fun. Not because of, oh, I, I gotta like, you know, be vested in this and keep going. They just keep going because it's a good story and they just want to keep playing because it's fun. And 14's like little tip screens and everything that come up they, they're they all about like okay, no, come here, play what we have to offer, get your fill, go play something else we'll come up with something new so you can come back. We'll keep coming up with stuff to make you come back, not try to drag out how long you're here. Exactly. Oh, you want you want you want to fight Kefka? Here he is. Oh, you want to you know re return to Ivalis? Here you go. Oh, you want to do like a tactics ogre ogre battle raid? Here you go, and just do like this this smorgasbord of just content that Square Enix is holding on to. Like, oh, we're gonna put it in FF14. Yeah. Just sprinkle it all in there. Going back. And that's to not necessarily anything that's evil about WoW and MMOs. You know, MMOs are great thing for a lot of people to connect and play with other people online but the problem the problem with wow is that they padded it way too much and just you know spread it out to where it's just be like all right we're gonna like you know you're gonna have to come back to this because you got to figure out what's gonna happen in the story next but that's gonna happen 30 days from now and you're just like what the hell and 30 days is being nice they got too far yeah that's being nice they got too far away from treating it like a game and a passion project for a team and it's just you know, how do we milk this cow anymore? Ha ha we found our whales. Let's get more money out. Uh, how do we monopolize their time more? How do we make sure that they don't find another game and realize that our game's super dated? It's kind of like you were making a Stewie. You were making a Stewie reference earlier. How about where he's like dragging his diaper around? He's like, Peter, <laughs> help! I can't fit any more in there. <laughs> but Microsoft doesn't typically function like that because they have so many properties and they have so many things. They and they have the Game Pass. Like we want you to have the Game Pass. We want you to play all this library game because we want you to keep paying for the Game Pass. So we're going to keep putting new things in there, first party things. <clears throat> so they don't need that, right? Because their retention and their 
big success has been the Game Pass, and the Game Pass doesn't care what game you're playing. No, because you're paying for it anyway, so it'll just be like, here you go. Now here's one thing, and here's the next, and here's the next. You and know, as soon you like play that. two games on Game Pass, you basically paid for it for the year, too. Mm-hmm. I don't know how long it's going to last, but yeah. Uh, it'll last. They're making Buku Buck off it because I don't think it's going to go anywhere. 